Just working on uh, getting us live here, so give me a second. Can you guys hear me good? everybody a couple minutes here yet to get on hopefully everybody had a good holiday i think a lot of us still got some uh fireworks probably to shoot off tonight i realized i just forgot my soda it sucks <coughs> excuse me so Crazies uh, asked Cradle versus Tube Style Rattle for Dipsy. That for a Tube Style Cradle, I think, is uh, is too difficult to get it out of the rod holder. kind of gets locked in there. It definitely isn't coming out, but it gets kind of locked in there. Looks like we got quite a few people on and coming on. Josh Heenan says hello. How are you? Uh, Brian Foreman, what's going on? Bob Anderson. So we got quite a few people coming on. Jeremiah Martin. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you want. Uh, that'll help us get this video out more. We've been doing real well with these lives, uh, which is awesome. I've also got a, a new video that's uploading right now. So that's, uh, that's exciting. That should be probably on by the time we're done here, I would say, which is good. Give it just another minute here, and then we'll uh, we'll get rolling. Craig Enderby says hi. Lots of thumbs up. I love it. Pound that thumbs up button. I think there's a button. I don't know if it's up at the top of your screen. I don't think I can see the same part of the screen you guys can, but... Um, Yeah. Randy says, what sucks worse than forgetting your soda is throwing your brand new salmon candy flasher and fly realizing you forgot to clip it. Yes, that does definitely suck. Um, let's see here. All right, let's get rolling. It's six o'clock. We'll have some more probably join in. Got a bunch of things I want to talk about. And I think we got some exciting things coming up. First and foremost, let's review last week a little bit. Um, fishing. Overall, I think up and down the Wisconsin shoreline remained tough last week. Uh, you know, there was there was some bright spots. Talk to rivers area had a day or two of really really good salmon fishing. Um, Sturgeon Bay looked like it started to peek its nose out and is uh, showing some big kings, just not in high volume up there on the Bank Reef. Uh, looks like 
Algoma and Kiwani are starting to show really, really nice catches. I'm seeing catches uh, in Algoma of 10 plus fish out deep. Um, I'm seeing, you know, catches in Kiwani. I'm actually getting messages right now as we speak of, of a couple of guys that are fishing Kiwani right now that are having some success, catching some really big kings on some salmon candy flashers, which is awesome. Um, so that's all really exciting stuff. We had a lot of the same, more south wind and cool water. Um, I was out over the weekend, primarily targeting kings. I uh, had a lot of luck. Um, I think it was Saturday morning. We loaded one or two nice uh, adult salmon. I lost a really, really good one that I would like to have gotten a view on. Um, Lily fought it for a long time. She didn't do anything wrong. It just came unbuttoned. Uh, I think we fought it for over 20 minutes. It had made two runs and was going to make its third run and uh, and just spit the hook. So that happens. Um, but overall, uh, it's been fairly tough. Sunday we were out fishing league and, and we struggled. I think a lot of boats have struggled. You know, there's been a, a little bit of hit and miss fishing. I saw out of Port Washington over the weekend, it looked like, you know, one or two boats did well in that like 200 to 280 area way south. Looks like there's a few specks of boats doing good down in Milwaukee. Um, but, you know, it's one or two boats out of 10 or 12. I had a customer message me yesterday um, that was down in Milwaukee and had five kings. So that's obviously a fantastic day. I know they were doing well on like Cryptotron and uh, Megatron, I think. And I think it took one or two on a fish blade. Um, but I think everything's about to change. Like literally in the next 24 hours, I think it's all about to change, which is what I want to talk about. Um, coming up here starting tomorrow through, I think, Friday, we're expected to get a big northeast blow. Um, does I don't know if it necessarily looks like it's going to be hard. Uh, tomorrow it looks like it's going to be pretty big, 15 to 20 out of the northeast, um, which you know is going to be pretty big. But I think the bigger thing is after it blows a little bit out of the northeast tomorrow, it's going to continue out of the northeast Thursday and Friday for sure. And what I expect that to do is I expect to get that, you know, that east-northeast current going and should do two things. It should warm up this side a little bit. We'll see. Uh, I'm not sold on that because there's so much cold water in the lake yet. Uh, I believe it will, but I'm not positive. It generally does, almost always does. Um, but again, I'm not 100% positive that that's going to happen. I think it will. But what I think it might do is if we can get some east in it, or hopefully it's got more east than north even, I think it's going to push some ish potentially over here from Michigan and or, you know, push some fish from the middle of the lake along the shoreline, which I think really, really we could use. Um, I think that would be a big deal and could really help our fishing overall if we were able to get some of them fish from the middle of the lake to come on towards the middle of our, towards our shoreline. So we've got some weather coming and that's going to change everything. Um, another thing that I'm really noticing that I wanted to make comment of is as good as like chrome and blue flashers and stuff have been this this early season again, um, and have continued to be good, I'm starting to see some things transition. Chrome and blue flashers and stuff have been this, this early season again, um, and have continued to be good, I'm starting to see some things transition. Um, just Brian Foreman just typed uh, on the chat, white blades started to turn on. I think you're going to start to see white blades turn on. I think you're going to start to see some of the more gaudy um, colors like Two-Face, uh, Lance's Two-Face, Lucky Charm. You're going to see a lot of those in both chrome and in white turn on. I think you're also going to see some of the green blades start to work. Uh, Morgan's Green Bam, uh, Marv's Big Fatty. UV Marv's Big Fatty, you know, those are all going to start to come into play. A lot of splashers I heard about over the weekend for a lot of guys was UV Super Frog. Uh, this in a chrome blank, this in a white blank is really starting to go. That's more of gaudy color. Um, and I think what's happening is, you know, whether the water temp wants to agree or not, we're closing in on midsummer here. Today's like July 5th, I think. Yeah, 5th. Um, so we're, you know, we're a week away here. So from about midsummer. And uh, whether the water temperature agrees with it or not, it, it, that's what it is. So I think the fish are going to start to transition. They will still bite some of the chrome and blue stuff. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Megatron, Studs Blue Chin, SGH will still continue to be, you know, produce. 
Um, but I think you're going to start to see maybe the best flashers in your mix start to flip into some of those um, other types of blades. Like I said, things like studs green chin. Uh, this is what we lost at Giant on on Saturday morning. Super UV frog. Um, Mountain Dew stud. You know, Lucky Charm, White Two-Face, Chrome Two-Face, Lance's Two-Face. Um, you know, all those kinds of more gaudy, more aggressive flashers are going to really start to play a role. Um, what else is going to happen with Northeast Wind? Well, if it does warm the water up, which I expect it to, the fish are going to drive down in the water count. It's like we might be fishing out a little further, uh, or for sure we're going to be fishing them down deeper. What does that mean? Well, your five colors, your seven colors are probably not going to be in play anymore. Um, it's probably going to be 200 coppers, 300 coppers, maybe even 400s or 450s. Um, your wire divers deep instead of running them 70, 80, 90, 100, you're probably going to want to have them out, you know, 120, 150, maybe even 200. High divers, instead of being out 70, 80, 90, and catching fish 10, 15 down, I'm guessing you're going to want them out 100 plus. Um, I really think that that's probably what's going to happen. We will see. Uh, you never quite do know. A lot of it's probably going to depend. It, it, a lot of it for sure is going to depend on how much east is in it. If it's got a lot of north in it, there's not a lot of warm water up north. So we're not going to get warm water. If it's got a lot of east in it, um, it, it, it could really light this thing up. I think it's got the potential chance to do that. I think it could light up fishing really good going into the weekend. And guess what starts this weekend? Salmonorama. And that's what I just made the video on. Um, the biggest derby on the entire lake starts Saturday and runs through the following weekend and then is just doubled up by that following weekend starts the KD Derby up in Kiwani Door County. And, um, you know, that'll be a uh, that'll be a big deal up there as well. And I think that this north-northeast wind or hopefully east-northeast would be what I would prefer to see. Um, I think that that's really going to get this fishery going and we could see the king fishing really, really improve. And maybe even the fishing overall improve because it probably will bunch the fish up. Instead of them being spaced out right now from, um, you know, a uh, in 40 foot of water all the way on out to, uh, you know, 300 foot of water, hopefully it bunches them up and makes it so that the fish are, are more congregated and easier to catch. So some other things I think that are coming to some of this stuff is pulled up on what you're going to watch on a video later today or tomorrow or whenever I get that on. But I want to share it with you anyways in case you don't get a chance to, to, uh, to look. Stan, by the way, uh, just asked. Let me, let me talk, touch on this for a second. Who won the drawings last week? I did post on the page, on my YouTube page, who won the drawings. But because of the scam situation, which a lot of people have seen, I'm going to change this week's winning strategy you again have to comment on this live video. You can do it from now through, what day is today? Tuesday. We'll go now through Friday at 6 p.m. So today through Friday at 6 p.m., if you comment on this video, you will be um, entered into the drawing. But I will from now on be announcing last week's winner at next week's live. That way I'm not typing the winners in. And that way um, some scam artist last week some scam artist last week doesn't uh, trick you guys into thinking you just want a Yaha mode or whatever else he was trying to do. So uh, the two winners were notified. Um, we we, we uh, notified the two winners. I think Jacob Zimmerman, and I don't remember the other one off the top of my head. I apologize. But from now on, I will announce the two winners. Um, I will announce them during the following live. So next Monday, on Monday's live, I'll announce the two winners from this week. So if you haven't commented on this yet, go ahead and do that. So you make sure you're qualified for next, you know, for this week's drawing. Um, back to what I was saying before, some of the things that I think you guys should make sure that you have and you have ready, uh, whether you're going to just go out fishing for fun or whether you're going to get into the Derby coming up here um, or, or maybe some of the other tournaments. Uh, I think you probably need to have your fish blades ready. And in particularly, I think in this particular stretch, probably 10 inch fish blades. Um, you know, I, I think there's three ways to fish these fish blades. And I, I'm not saying I don't think you won't catch anything on the 12 inch ones. It's just, I expect the water to warm up some. I don't expect it to, to get super warm. Uh, and if that's the case, then my expectation would be we're going to probably start to fish, uh, fish like 40 to 80 or 90 down. And that's my sweet spot for the 10 inch fish blades. And there's three ways I like to fish them, or with three different things, I should say. Um, first and foremost, probably the most popular, 
um, is a fly, just a regular fly. This is an illumination fly right here on a Megatron 10 inch fish blade. Um, I like the, this uh, illumination uh, 30 inches behind the uh, flasher. So that's the number one way you can, um, you know, fish this program or fish these 10 inch blades would be just with a standard fly like you would your eight inch flash, but fish them with a 10 inch fish blade. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, fish them with a 30 inch leader. You need a little longer leader uh, for this aggressive rotation. Uh, the second way I would fish a fish blade would be a 10 inch flat or fish blade with meat. Um, whether you're fishing with, with a you know meat rig or, or just a head or whatever the case may be, um, either way, I would definitely have one of these on. And I'm going to definitely fish three of these the first time I get out after this blows. I'm going to fish one with a fly, one with a meat rig, and then the last thing we'll talk about and let the fish tell me which one they want. But like this glow green jeans would be a great one to put deep down in my spread, maybe even my deepest rod probably with a piece of meat on it and see what happens there. Um, next is the, this is a blue jeans, for example. Um, next, not last uh, or least for sure, would be the uh, vegan rig, which is I definitely think this weekend and, and out the entire time of the salmon Um Probably would be, you know, one of my deeper rods, maybe on a down rigger um, or a long copper, but I know a 10 inch fish blade with a vegan rig will be very, very good. Uh, for you if the fish start to slide down in the water column and uh, we start fishing a little bit more of these aggressive strategies. So I'm definitely suggesting that you you get some of these 10-inch fish blades in your spread. Now, let's talk a little bit about flies. Um, it seems like this year, you know, flies have been pretty typical for early in the season. Um, Mercy UV, Illumination UV, Nova Cane, those have all been um, really good flies, you know, early on here. Does anybody else have an audio trouble? I just had one guy message and say, looks like one guy posted in the chat, video stopped. The guy said audio. You guys hearing me? Okay, hang on one second. Are we back? Scott, Francois, are you are you hearing me? Okay, everybody else sounds like they're hearing me. Okay, well, I opened the door again. I should have learned that from last time. I, maybe, uh, maybe some guys are having some issues. But at any rate, go back to what I was saying. Uh, I think that with flies, it started the season off pretty much normal. Uh, Mercy UV, Illumination UV, Novocaine, those were all really, really good flies early in the season. I expect those flies to still be okay, but I'm already hearing a lot about transition. Um, you know, the transition, already hearing a lot about transition, um, you know, the transitioning into some of the flies that I expect to see be really, really good later in the year. Uh, first and foremost, absolutely no doubt in my mind, um, is Glowing Lep, Glowing Leprechaun. If you guys don't have this fly, get an order in immediately for a couple packs of this. This was definitely um, the hottest fly in, this, in Wisconsin that Sam and Candy made last year in late July and early August. This was the deal. You, you should have some of these. I'm already hearing guys having quite a bit of success with this particular fly. Another fly that I see this year um, that I think it, it, this is the time of year where it's going to shine for sure is the Glow Green Goblin. I would have that uh, available and to be fished. And another one that has always been really good for me later in the year is Doughboy. Um, you know, that's one of our more shiny frog flies that does seem to work a little bit later in the in the season versus early. Um, and two other ones would be 50-50 frog and addiction. Both of those are frog flies again that um, have more opaque, you know, white colors in them and tend to work later in the year. 
Uh, so I think it's a transition time here, guys, and we're going to get into this transition where if you leave on the stuff you've been fishing, you probably will have some success, but I don't think you'll have nearly as much success as you should. Somebody did ask, well, where would you start? After this blow, I think I would probably set up in 80 foot and make an east pass out to 180 and a west pass back into 80 and tell me where they are. Um, I think that's an important option for you um, that, you know, will tell you where the fish are. You're going to probably have to do some east and west to allow the fish to, to sort of let you know where they're going to be. And each and every port is probably going to be slightly different um, on where the fish exactly set up, depending on what angle this wind is at and what exactly happens. So um, that kind of goes through some of the you know, particular stuff I expect to be good coming up here. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Derby. So coming up is the, the Salmonorama. Uh, there's a couple really exciting things with that. They're giving away 21000 something cash and a Yana kicker motor, which basically is going to equal out to be $25,000, um, plus a lot of other money handed out um, for lots of other fish. They also have what a lot of people like to fish up and down the shoreline called the Big Five which is the five biggest fish over the nine days. Um, I I do like to fish it. Uh, this particular year, I'm not going to get a chance to fish all of it because I will be, I, I shouldn't say that, I'll be a fishing all of it, but I'll be on a couple different boats. So I'll be on this boat, the Vendetta, a few days for sure. I'll probably end up running a charter or two in the next few days um, over on the fish stick, and they're entered in on it. And then I'm heading to Ludington, next Wednesday to fish the Ludington Offshore Challenge. So I'll be over there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I believe we're going to enter it on the rocks and reels because we're going to be out for straight days. We might as well enter the big five. We'll have derby tickets anyways. Um, and we can see how we can do. So not going to be real serious about it as I'm going to be jumping from, from fish to, or boat to boat. But I am looking forward to, you know, being part of it and always know that, you know, Anytime you get a you get a fish online, it could be that twenty five thousand dollar fish. So that's super exciting. And then, as I said, next weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend, as Salmon Rama is finishing up, the KD Derby is starting. And if you're not familiar with that one, that's up in Kiwani Door County. So you gotta you have to fish somewhere in Kiwani and Door County. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do any of that or not. I guess it depends on when we get the rocks and reels back to Marinette, if Scott wants to fish up there or not a little bit, or probably how wore out will be from the Ludington event. Let's start to field a little bit of questions. Um, <clears throat> have you guys got some questions about what's, uh, what's going to be coming up here or what you think, you know, if you want my help on what, what I think you should do with something in particular, uh, now is a good time to ask that. It probably is something that somebody else might, might be interested in as well. Um, I know for those of you that are on here from Lake Ontario, it looks like fishing is still really good over there. I was over there last week and that was a blast. Um, it's nice to see some of our stuff really, really working well over there. Um, things like, uh, you know, Songan's Green Bam, Songan's Chrome Bam, Icon, um, Marge Big Fatty, you know, all of that stuff is really, really, you know, all of that stuff is really, really good. Uh, Philip asks, what fly do you run on the UV Super Frog? Philip, so the way I treat flies is a little different than flashers, and I've talked about this a lot. I don't run any specific flies on any specific flashers. Every time I go out, I like to give the fish a mix, um, and then if I get a bite or two, I will instantly start multiplying um, more and more and more of that same one. So, for example, um, if I was going to go out tomorrow with Super Frog on it, I probably would have you know, like either illumination or maybe a doughboy on there. And then if that particular rod got bit, I would likely have more of that, um, you know, that particular color of fly on some more flashers. Uh, somebody asked if I heard anything out of that Racine Kenosha area. It sounds like it was pretty tough. I did see a report that somebody said they went out to like two to 300 foot of water and had like 20 bites. So that sounds really, really good to me out of um, Racine. Uh, I also saw today that, um, uh, schools out sport fishing Shane Jock who's a really good dude and a friend of mine saw that he looked like he cranked on him pretty good today too so maybe it is starting to get get real good uh down in that Racine Kenosha area um Patrick G says preferred meat type you know Pat I do like um Ballyhoo. um I think it holds up a little bit better 
but if you can get your hands on, you know, good herring, which is really hard to do, I think the shine of the skin on the herring definitely um, can be effective and can be helpful. So I guess it just totally depends on um, what I can get my hands on at the time. But over the course of time, Ballyhoo has been the most consistent for me. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Albert Pope says, what speed do you find with different flashers to run vegan rigs? Um, I, I would say I would just run the vegan rigs on whatever your general, you know, king speed is with flies. For me, that's like 1.9 to 2.2, two, two, generally speaking. Um, I think the vegan rig is just, you know, it's very similar to a meat rig, um, except it doesn't have, obviously, the head and the piece of meat. Um, but I've found it that it generally works, you know, the same time meat rigs would work as well. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, some days they'd rather have flies than meat. Like when I was in New York last week fishing with John Forder um, of the, on the Mr. Sport Fishing, we put some meat in the water. We did have some meat bites, but there was no doubt um, that the kings were on flies. They were they were preferring flies. So that would have been a great opportunity. We didn't try it. Um, that would have been a great opportunity where the vegan rig, I think, would have probably stood out, um, you know, on a bigger fish blade or something like that versus meat. Um, C Schaefer 1011 says, seen some people are getting big kings regularly on pump handle. Think it, think it's time to get those stealth presentations out. No, I, I don't necessarily think it's time to start with pump handle now. Pump handle should have been good all the way through. I think if this water does what I think it's going to do, I think you're going to find that the uh, fish are going to slide down deeper. You won't have to be as stealthy and your wire divers, even down riggers a little bit. And then your longer covers, 50, 300s, 350, 400s, those should all start to um, really, really play um, play an effect. David Gray says, anything going on in Kiwani? Yeah, like I said, I was just getting reports before that Kiwani is really shaped up. I've had two different people actually message me today with some nice kings out of Kiwani. So it seems like um, Kiwani is really, really starting to liven up. Uh, Nick B says, copper time. I would I would agree with that. Sean says bite was tough over the weekend in port, marking a lot of fish in 110 to 135, but no takers. Yeah, Sean, I heard a lot of the same thing. The only guys that I heard that did well out of port this weekend were guys fishing that 200 to 280 way south, and it looked like they cranked down them pretty good. Um, but it was it was mostly guys that fished closer to home and in shallower did not do well. Um, SRT4 says if you are marking fish and your speed is correct, what do you change if you're not getting bit? Um, well, first of all, your speed being correct might be a day by day thing, meaning, um, you know, I would adjust my speed before I would adjust my lose. Generally speaking, if I'm not getting any bites at all and I have my best, uh, it's out, then I think I probably need to adjust speed if I'm marking fish. Um, the second thing would be if I play with the speed and I can't get it to work, I'd probably start to change baits, but at that point, my guess would be. Um, the fish that I'm on are not active, and I probably need to look for a different pot of fish that might be active. Jeremiah Martins asks, where are the rainbows in Sheboygan? Jeremiah, if I had to guess the middle of the lake, um, I did hear a couple reports over the weekend that some guys got out 400 foot and caught some. It wouldn't surprise me at all if they were even way deeper than that. Uh, as I said, I think this um, northeast blow should help the uh, – the fishing and should push some fish in um, into the shoreline instead of out in the in the deep water. So hopefully that's the case, and um, hopefully it loads up the fish and congregates them. What other questions do we have? Anybody got any strategy questions for the derby, or just wondering, you know, what what else is going on coming up for the weekend? Brian Kerber says, I hope the wind doesn't blow the fish to Wisconsin side. It's pretty tough right now on Michigan side unless you're up by Ludington. Yeah, Brian, it's kind of a win loss for me, right? Um, if it blows them on the Wisconsin side, that's good because they're going to start biting over here. It's bad because I'm leaving for Michigan next week. So um, that'll make it really, really tough. West Angler says, how far down would you set up this upcoming weekend? I would look at the water temp and see where the break is, Midwest Angler. But assuming and kind of what I'm guessing, I think you're going to be fishing in that 40 to 80 foot uh, range down, kind of where I think the key area is going to be. Uh, Pat Austin says, are you setting your deepest rigger at a certain water temperature? No. You know, I'll fish my deepest rigger even out of temp, as I call it, um, you know, real deep. 
A lot of times I like to have at least one outlier rod, so I'll have my deepest rigger, you know, way down 91, 101, 121, something like that. Um, you know, uh, and with this water warming up, it's it's likely that, you know, I may have a rigger way down there come this weekend looking for some fish that got shoved down. So um, Nick B says blow them all over to Wisconsin. Yeah, it's hard to argue that. Um, somebody asked if I thought a 16-foot boat would be able to get out this weekend. Um, Sean, Sean, I don't predict the weather. I never have, and I don't like to. Um, I definitely don't like to give anybody advice more than 24 hours in advance. Today is Tuesday. Um, I think anybody on this board should should know by now, and if you haven't know, uh, learned by now, um, you should not worry about the weather five days in advance. Um, I'm not convinced that we're going to have you know, a big Northeaster after tomorrow or a bunch of Northeast after tomorrow. I'm, I'm not convinced of that. Um, I just don't believe the weathermen more than 24 hours out. I don't think they're very consistent on that. Um, I do think that they generally do get the direction of the wind, wind right. So I do think they're probably going to be accurate on the Northeast wind for the next how many days, but for how hard it blows, we'll see. Um, but I surely wouldn't, um, you know, be changing my plans or worrying about the weather on Tuesday. I think he can't really make that decision, in my opinion, until probably Friday morning. Um, Sean asks, how much does structure affect how fish congregate in certain areas like steep drop-offs or points? Sean, it, it, it can matter hugely. Unfortunately, Lake Michigan does not have a lot of uh, structure. So, uh, uh, so where we do have structure, I'll give you a few examples. Uh, Wind Point down in Racine. Um, Harrington Beach Point, as I call it, down in Belgium, uh, Raleigh Point up in Two Rivers, and then the Bank Reef up in Sturgeon Bay. Those are pretty much the largest key um, structure pieces on this side of the lake. The other side of the lake, you know, you have the the drop, as people call it, or the ledge or the shelf out of Manistee and Ludington. Um, you have Big Point Sable, Little Point Sable. Um, you know, there's a bunch of pieces of structure over there, the Manitou Islands. Um, those are all big pieces of structure that definitely congregate fish. Um, and they're areas that I would recommend if you live near or you fish near, you know, I would typically try to fish those areas as much as possible. Pat Austin says, how early are you setting rods on your morning trip? Well, that's going to be talked about in that video, but I, I, I think we need to start getting out early. 3.30, 4 o'clock, um, I think is when guys should start getting out if they're trying to chase big kings. Uh, CD says, new to this, how long of a lead you typically put out on a rigger? Um, if it's an eight inch flasher or a spoon CD, I like 75 to 150 feet behind ball. Um, so 75 to 150 on an eight inch flasher or a spoon. If it's a big fish blade or like a big 11 inch flasher, then I reel it into yeah, 40 to 60 feet behind the ball. Um, Rod Benders TV says, some people have told me that you're wasting your time fishing flies this time of year. Any take on that? Uh, I have no idea what they mean by that. Um, I think flies are good all times of year. They're extremely good June, July, and August. Uh, matter of fact, there's a lot of days that go by right now that I don't even have a, a spoon out. So, um, you know, that's me, and that's in particularly chasing have a, a spoon out. So, um, you know, that's me, and that's in particularly chasing kings. Uh, so that's, that's that. Um, Aaron K says, any suggestions on spoons, color, and sizes? Well, if I was going to mention spoons, I think we're going to start to get into that, um, you know, later of the year bite. The glow spoons are going to start to work. Magnum sizes in particularly, I like better um, starting to get to this time of year. So colors like booger nose uh, UV, bloody nose UV, frozen nose UV, toasted wonder, wonder bread, those are all colors that I would have on. If colors that I would have on, if I was going to be fishing some spoons um, in magnet sizes, looking for big kings. Um, Gary says, or Jerry uh, says, talk coming, talk coming full moon, daytime bite at noon. Yeah, so full moon's coming, um, and I, I mentioned that in my video um, on the salmon rama deal coming up. Uh, I think there's going to be three times a day. You're going to see probably three bite windows coming up here. Um, for the Kings, and it's probably going to be as the follow. Um, 3.30, you know, 3, 3.30 in the morning till 5, 6 o'clock, something like that. It's going to probably die out. 
Then you're going to get another window between like that 10 and 1, 11 and 1 time frame um, where you're going to see some kings caught. And then you're going to get another bite window real late at night, probably in that 8.30 to 9.30, 10 o'clock time frame. Those are the times you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're on the water if you're trying to focus on big kings. Um, Fishing with Pete says black jeans mag on a seven color. Been married to that rod for two seasons. Yep, can't argue that. Black jeans is a good color. Green jeans is a good color. Um, those are all really good spoon colors that if I was going to be fishing spoons, I would I would definitely have on my side. Um, Brian Harvey says, how about a night bite with full moon? Yeah, so a night bite is an option. Um, my, my, my thing, my experience with the night bite thing or fishing through the night has been very hit and miss. I've seen some really impressive catches and nice days um, or nice uh, fishing happen during the night. And I've also seen um, it be a, uh, over. Basically, you catch a couple of fish right at dark and then catch nothing all night long. Um, it's something to try when you have a full moon. If you have clear skies and a full moon, you can definitely give it a try. The downside for me to it is it usually wipes you out for the next day. So if it doesn't work, you know, a lot of times you're not out there the next morning or even the next evening sometimes because you're completely wiped out from that. So um, Joel says you mentioned the morning. What about fishing to PM? Uh, I actually mentioned the PM too, Joel. So morning, 3.30 to like 6 a.m., noontime, like 11 to 1, and then evening time, like 8 to 10 at night is probably when I think the best fishing is going to be, you know, come the uh, come the evening time. You know, that real late, right at last light um deal uh when, when we get a full moon it usually uh does create a midday bite but it also really makes it an early and late bite as well so all right any other questions um otherwise pretty quick we'll probably get going here make it a little bit of a um shorter live this week just because we got fireworks coming up here in a couple of hours and i'm sure you guys are probably doing some things at home maybe with the kids or whatever i'm still working on celebrating the fourth of july um, but as I said, um, make sure that if you want to get some things for salmon arama, you know, hit the website www.salmoncandy.com. Almost all orders have been going out without a, within a day. Um, you get your order in, get on there right away, get your order in, get some fish blades ordered, get a few more of those more later in the year flashers. Um, I think, uh, you know, I think colors like Songan's Green Bam, Marv's Big Fatty, Super Frog, and White and Chrome um you know uh to do, 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 do some of the two face you know face you know lance's two face i think a lot of those colors are all gonna be really good coming up here as we're getting into later in the season make sure you got some glowing lep flies and make sure you're getting some 10 inch fish blades um and maybe a few 12s even if this water warms up because i think it's that's big king stuff right there um yes doug i said the glowing leprechaun is the fly right here, the glowing lep um, is what you need. So um, Ryan says 12 inch fish blades, smashing kings on the Michigan side, any time frame on restock. Yeah, we're continuing to try to put more on as fast as we can. We've been focusing pretty hard on the eight inch because uh, the sales have been strong there. But as we're getting later into the year here now, we will definitely be trying to you know get more of the fish blades on the website. Any other question? Midwest Angler says my order arrived in three days. That's fantastic. Remember, smash that uh, thumbs up button. We got quite a few of that. Um, I'll announce next week's winner. All you have to do to be eligible for next week's or this week's drawing is uh, um, just make any comment in the comment section. I'll announce this week's winner next Monday's live. Um, I'll be in. Yeah, Patrick, green jeans is still hot. Um, I'll be in. Ludington next week, so I might even go live from there a couple times. Not on Monday, I'll be here in Wisconsin yet, but um, when I'm in Ludington, I might go live on the Facebook page, and then I'm going to try to get this video up, which is uh, one that you guys should watch. It's titled How to Win $35,000, and it talks about derby and tournament strategies, and I'm sharing with you guys. Um, I've got 30 plus years of fishing Lake Michigan tournaments and derbies um, of experience, and uh, I'm willing to share it with you guys. So uh, Fishing with Pete says, if you are using AOIs for meat rig, do you think the size of the AOI matters? Yeah, I do. Um, I like big ones in particularly. Um, when I have, uh, when I fish meat, I prefer to have big, bigger pieces of it. I don't, I don't like small ones. Um, so that green jeans with what color fly? I would say No Mercy or Glow Green Goblin. Um, 
SRT4 says, when you're checking the weather, what do you rely on? Great Lakes, um, whether it's something to check or the buoys. Buoys would be one. The other one would be NOAA. I really, really prefer um, NOAA as far as my um, weather goes. So at this point, I think we'll wrap it up for this week's. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back next week. I'll announce this week's winner next week. And it, like I said, if you haven't, get on there and uh, get some fish blades ordered. Get ready for the weekend. I think the Northeast wind might be getting it just uh, just going at the right amount of time. So let's rock and roll. Check out the new video. Good luck this weekend fishing.